Welcome back to These Aren't The Nerds You're Looking For, everybody. This is Lorenzo Fawn here, sitting with... Kevin Ford. How you doing, man? Pizza is my friend. Yeah, we're just having a... Uh, that's a that's a green room. <laughs> Hilarity. <laughs> we're it's having a conversation funny. about food and accents and other random things. But yeah. Yeah. How's it going in your parts of the woods? Uh, you know, it's going well. Can't complain. Spring is uh, supposed to be starting here soon, or already has started by the time this comes out, hopefully. So we're is in it? that is transitionary <laughs> period. Whatever. My I think go-to. by the time this episode airs, it'll be right before daylight saving time kicks in, right? Yeah. It's uh, February 27th today. Yeah. So a couple, a couple more weeks, really. One more week? I don't remember. Anyways... What are we going to be talking about today? We got, we, got, uh, we got an episode of The Clone Wars called Evil Plans. This is the 54th episode of uh, our Clone Wars saga, if you will. And yes. uh, it's season 3, episode 8, production code 303, originally released on November 5th, 2010. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one looks like it clocks in at exactly 22 minutes. So how about that? Very nice. Yeah, the uh, the fortune cookie for this one is a failure in planning is a plan for failure. Who you got? This sounds like an Obi Obi Wan quote. I went straight to C three PO. Hmm. I don't see him thinking this way though. I mean, he is a protocol droid, right? So he's uh. That's like what he does, isn't it? I, I guess. What about R2? Is R2 like lecturing C-3PO when he's all uh, fussing all over the place? Like this fortune cookie is too earnest almost for, C, uh, for R2-D2. Like R2-D2 would be a lot more snarky about it. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. I can kind of see your C-3PO argument. So tell me why you went with uh, with Obi-Wan. Uh, it's sort of... It, it sounds like something he would kind of feed off to Anakin, right? Like these little wig, wisdom nuggets as he's trying to coach I like, Anakin in various ways. I like the return of the wisdom nugget. And uh, I do feel you like when Anakin... Um, just kind of goes off the rails and fucking does whatever he wants, right? Right, exactly. And then comes back and, you know, success or failure, most, you know, this particular quote would be uh, if the plan didn't succeed. And we know that Anakin, you know, is kind of a Indiana Jones make it up as he goes type of type of guy. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I dig it. Right. That That's where my thinking was for this one. O- so Obi-Wan it is. Cool. Very cool. So jumping into the episode proper here, or with the newsreel, that is, Mm -hmm. uh, we get a broad setup of things to come. Uh, We basically start with the episode title. We absolutely start with the episode title, and then it's like a basically like a plot summary of what's going to happen in the episode, and then we get a... Meanwhile, and then like a description of the f- what's happening in the first scene, and then we get to the episode in general. Uh, yeah, how did you like this newsreel as opposed to kind of the the way that we've seen things in the past, where it's like a recap of uh, whatever stories have happened before, or if it's been like a little bit of time since we've seen the characters, like a little bit of voiceover catch up. Um, the newsreels that do recaps, I think that's like a very good way to circumvent the recap format that uh-huh. happens in a lot of shows. Because I, I'm not gonna lie, have we talked about how much I dislike that format before on this show? I probably, uh, but I, I don't know for yeah, sure. Just to recap, I guess um, part of the reasons I don't like recaps in in weekly shows, especially. Um, and a reason I think binging has become popular in the last five to ten years um, 
is just due to the lack of hand holding that I feel a recap does. And one of my big pet peeves with recaps is when they end up spoiling the episode itself, as odd as this may sound. Um, this is a weird example, but the show that made me notice this was happening was Desperate Housewives. When it was first uh, big in the first couple of seasons it started airing back in, what was it, like 2004, 2005, 2006 mm-hmm. region. Um, because especially once you got later in the show, you would get these recaps that would be like, they would be flashing back to events that would have happened either 10 episodes ago or the season prior with episode or with characters that you had completely forgotten about. And they're like, you know, Hey, like, remember this character that left? We're just going to talk about him in this recap for no reason at all, which then I'm sitting there going, that character is back for fuck's sake. Like this whole plot line that I completely forgot about. And we're moving on from here. It goes right. Did that happen in this newsreel? Not in this one particularly, but so what I like about the newsreel as it regards to recaps again is that it kind of circumvents it. It kind of gives it a fresh way of doing that. But then for this one, what I kind of liked was, yes, it reveals characters that we didn't, these aren't characters that like disappeared per se based on how this show works. It's not as linear as say desperate housewives where each week builds on the last and Mm -hmm. it just keeps building and there there can be standalone episodes but they're still taking place within a single neighborhood whereas in this show we're like branching off you know like like Jabba the Hutt is there and Jabba the the Hutt gets named in this newsreel Mm -hmm. so what I like about this newsreel in particular is it kind of shifts it a little bit and goes look we're going to talk about Jabba the Hutt we're going to talk about Cad Bane and it wasn't spoiler to me in terms of like, oh, we're going to have characters dealing with like Jabba the Hutt because he's been missing for 10 episodes and we're going to bring him up here. It's more of this one definitely felt more of like we're laying the pieces down, mm-hmm. right? Like we're Jabba the Hutt is involved and so is Cad Bane, right? But by virtue of them being mentioned here, it didn't spoil the rest of the episode for me in terms of story or plot really you know because the episode itself doesn't try to go like surprise cad bane's back which would happen in desperate housewives hmm. where like long lost characters you know disappear they're in the recap and then like halfway through the episode there's like a gasp clutching pearls like what are you doing here you know like bitch we knew you were coming back because you got mentioned in the fucking recap yeah um I did not think about it that way. Um, Mm -hmm. I liked this newsreel. It, it's meant the newsreel is meant to like, of to just kind of verbally do the whole uh, opening crawl, right? Right. And this is this one is like the Revenge of the Sith opening crawl, where it's like bombastic statement. Here's what's War. here's what's going on, or here's what has just happened. Here's what's going on, and then they show you here's what's going on. You just get into it. Absolutely, I enjoyed that. I didn't even make the connection, like seeing Cad Bane in the in the little snippets during the newsreel. Mm-hmm. Um, the first time that I watched this, I didn't like my brain didn't go, "Oh, Cad Bane is gonna be in this episode." Because it was like, hey, some shit's going down. There are some evil plans. Which, at that point, I probably should have been like, oh, the episode title is Evil Plan. But it's evil not plans, like... Yep. it's. I mean, we know the episode titles, right? But it's not as though the show starts and it's like, Evil Plan. And then Star Wars fade to background. And then and then uh, fortune cooking in the newsreel, right? It's just right. like, it's just like Star Wars, Clone Wars, here we go, we're starting, you know, evil plan, yada, 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 blah, 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 blah. And then later, spoiler alert, we already covered that, uh, Cad Bane is in this episode, and at that point I got excited. Like, that's right. cool. Uh, so for me it wasn't, it, you know, it didn't ruin that reveal later, 
It was just kind of like, you got Jabba, you got Cad Bane, they're bad dudes doing bad shit. Meanwhile, right? like, literally, we get a meanwhile, and yeah. we jump like, into the actual episode, and Padme is planning some fucking party uh, right. to convince another senator to vote in her favor. And the way yeah. she's going to do this is by throwing a, throwing a party cake. and making sure that she's got his favorite dessert, which is a Jogan fruit cake. Yep. Yeah. So getting into the episode. Yeah. So there is that. But R2-D2 and C-3PO are also helping out with the party planning. And the Jogan fruit cake does not actually have Jogan on it. C-3PO is protocol droiding the shit out of this entire fucking planning of yeah. this party. Yeah. What I wrote was that he went full devil wears Prada. That's uh. nice. I called him <laughs> Fussy P.O. And uh, then my next note was, and a cake with many exclamation points. And then missing Jogan fruit. And then... Uh, Annie talks, Annie's like, hey, okay, we're missing the fucking fruit. Go get the fruit. 3PO's like, I can't do that. I'm here doing this thing. And he's and he's like, whatever, send R2. And 3PO's like, no, we shouldn't do that because he's the one that got us in this predicament in the first place. Yeah, it was his task to start with, and then somehow R2 forgot to get Jogan, which I don't understand. Uh, but, you know, it's our... our event MacGuffin, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, Our inciting incident here is that there is missing fruit from the fruitcake. Is is a Jogan something in the real world that I'm missing? Is this... No, I don't believe so. I believe it's a made-up alien deal. Because this... I don't... I... Yes. What am I trying to say here? Um... Jogan fruit comes up as a MacGuffin or as a central part of many episodes of not just the Clone Wars, but of Rebels also. Right. Uh, it's, I guess it's something that Dave Filoni came up with and like decided to stick with it. And, you know, it's like a Easter egg favorite of his. I don't know. I don't. Yeah. I think it's just one of those good like connecting things that gets brought back up, you know. Rather than trying to just introduce fruit endlessly, it just makes sense that there might be one that is more popular amongst many peoples of the galaxy. Is it more popular or is it just harder to find? Because uh, this episode, C-3PO and R2-D2 are sent on a mission to buy some Jogan fruit. Uh, There is an early episode of Rebels where... Ezra and Zeb are sent to buy some Jogan fruit. I don't think it's hard to find, you know. Mm-hmm. I think it's just one of those things that gets brought up a lot here, but yeah. Um, hmm. yeah I don't know. I, I've never thought of it as being a rare fruit or anything. You know, it's not like trying to get a, it's not like trying to get a pineapple in like the 1920s or anything, you know, like I like me some pineapple and I like <laughs> me some pineapple on my pizza. Yeah. You know, I am a pineapple on my pizza sort of person too. Like not all the time, but I enjoy it. You know, a good Hawaiian pizza, ham and pineapple, either one. But I'll, anyways, I'll yeah. do, I'll do pepperoni and pineapple, but, uh, Ooh. but what Anakin does here is turns this into like a game, sends off a mission. Um, he sends the two droids out to, he's like, all right, C-3PO, you can't go? Well, here you go. You're going to be on a mission. Um, yeah, so he gives C-3PO 40 credits and sends R2-D2 with him to the market to go get Jogan Fruit. So then, yeah, C-3PO and uh, R2-D2 head out and C-3PO's flustered and angry. He's, like, grumbling a lot. And he's kind of fighting with R2-D2 a little bit. Um, but then they basically do find a fruit friender. And there's some haggling going on back and forth. They end up paying 
32 credits for four Jogan fruit that get put in a canister. Uh, this is after C3PO sucks at haggling and it goes from four credits per fruit piece to basically doubling that price. Yeah, well, it starts um, at it starts at four credits. Yeah, and C three PO's like, great, and he's like, yeah, a piece, and then he's like, uh, okay, sure, yeah, and then uh, you know, he's like, hey, R two, pay the man. And he's like, yeah, I'm at thirty two. It is what it is. Yeah, and then so he just goes for it. Uh, so they do that. C three PO takes them, but then as they start uh heading back. Uh, we have a couple cutaway scenes here where we do then see Cad Bane with uh, his other droid friend Toto making to- a uh, return. Toto 360 is back, so yeah, Toto's he back. was he got himself blowed up in uh, in a previous episode, and uh, he's back. That would that would have been Holocron heist. Yeah. Back. So we have two episodes in a row then with the appearance of Seth Green. Yes, which I'd like to bring up. Um, and so, yeah, we get a few cut cutaways as they're walking through the market of, uh, Cad Bane and Toto spying on C-3PO and R2-D2 and Cad Bane makes it pretty clear that they need to capture the, the gold one. Mm -hmm. Um, the gold one is our target. He's the one we want. Yes. So then after the purchase is made by C-3PO and R2-D2, they start headed off and Toto approaches them and kind of swindles them again into like hey like don't you want to like get cleaned up or anything like you guys look like you've been you know doing a lot of work like you guys look a little weary but you know like there's nothing a good droid spa couldn't do to fix you guys up and c3po and r2d2 is like droid spas droid spas are a thing that's a thing like that sounds great but c3po is like no 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 i told my master that we're gonna be on a mission and we're sticking with the mission that's what we're going to be doing so yeah it is it is worthy of noting that earlier when they when earlier banter before they get the jogan fruit uh c3po said tells r2 that he wanders off like a drunken nuna nuna and yes, the like Nunas that, yeah. are the space chickens that we've seen before <laughs> we've seen them before on naboo and uh, then later we saw him in that episode. Uh, I don't remember which one, but they were eating them. They were like cooked up like some fried chicken. I'm not gonna lie, I don't remember that at all. So <laughs> basically, basically a space chicken. So yeah, yeah. He's calling him like a drunken chicken. That's not something that I'm familiar with, but it might might be something that I add into my everyday vocabulary. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so what happens is that R2 wanders off and takes himself to the droid spa, and then C-3PO gets himself kidnapped. Yep, kidnapped and taken away, uh, where he is promptly uh, tortured, basically, at the hands of uh, Cad Bane and his droid gang. Definitely Um. tortured. Uh, Did you notice, you may not have because you don't read Arbesh, but did you notice where... Cad Bane was when C-3PO is delivered to him, and then they no. kind of like switch taxis. Uh, so if you look it up on Wikipedia, it says he's outside a video store, mm-hmm. uh, but what the what the neon sign says above his head is hot. So I don't know if this is like a pornographic video store or if he's like at a strip club or something, but uh, it's it's one step away from like new girls hot 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 triple x or right. something like that right and you can only see part of the sign so uh i think this is the 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 cd portion of of course the, the light district in. of coruscant yeah which is weird that this is where you need to go to find some jogan fruit hey man just everybody needs to eat so <laughs> i guess so yeah uh, so yeah, we get a little back and forth cutting between, uh, R2-D2 at the spa and he's getting buffed up and like dipped in liquids to get cleaned off and stuff. And then we cut back to see 3 po basically being tortured in various ways. Mm-hmm. Um, we then, uh, get 
uh, the information that CAD is trying to get is uh, the Senate floor plans. Yes. Uh, but C-3PO brings up that he is not the one that, in fact, has it. Uh, that would be R2-D2, uh, which is kind of odd of C-3PO to say aloud without thinking about that. Like He's not doing too much thinking, and I wonder, it it could be because of like the restraining bolt that Cad Bane slapped on his forehead. Mm-hmm. Uh, C-3PO does ask, like, why did you do that? And Cad's like, to get the information that I want. And I guess the only pertinent information that C-3PO has is that it is R2's specialty, as he pronounces it, mm-hmm. uh, to have all the plans and maps and data and everything else. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he is totally getting tortured. And this uh, this torture droid that's doing it to him, is, according to Dave Filoni, the same torture droid that you see at Jabba's Palace Ah, in Return of the Jedi. Same dude. So uh, C-3PO's hanging there, and they, like, hook a bunch of electric prods up to him, and they're just, like, electrocuting him. Yes, yeah. I guess this is a form of torture for, for droids. I'm not really sure. But they're trying to extract information out of him, so I don't know if it's, like, stick the restraining bolt on him, uh, to somewhat be able to control his behavior and then send electroshocks through him to bypass any safety protocols that are built mm-hmm. into him to be able to then extract the information out. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. yeah, I was confused by the the torture techniques on droids as well. I, I'm not going to lie. I always have been since I, Return of the Jedi. So. I think that's what's happening in this one. Yeah. Uh, I think in Return of the Jedi, it's just a pain thing, and I don't think that they're trying to get any type of information. I just think they're trying to make this they're droid miserable. Uh, right. Um, I do have to say, the the editing of this scene was not great, in my opinion. Okay. It was a weird back and forth, and part of it was um, for such a serious situation that C-3PO finds himself in, The I understand what they were trying to do, but the cutting to R2-D2 in the spa had the effect of just lessening the tension that would be building on the C-3PO side of things. You know, I would have rather seen it play out on C-3PO side of things. And then maybe we get like a, like, oh, I wonder what happened to R2-D2. Then we see him in the spa, you know. Okay, so I liked it. And mm-hmm. here's why I liked it. It was like bad shit's happening to 3PO cut back to uh tool in r2 you know just whistling around yeah. and like he gets a bath he gets a massage he gets a buff job mm-hmm. and then he just strolls out and this is him being a drunken nuna and just wandering off and kind of like do 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 and kind of doing yeah. what he wants and so uh i thought it was i thought it was funny it's similar to i don't know things you see in like other movies where it would be like uh let me go to Iron Man 2. Iron, is Iron Man 2 when Natalia is introduced? Or is that Iron Man 3? Yeah, Iron Man 2. Yep. Yeah, so Happy and Black Widow are like mm-hmm. running down the hall, right? Right. And Happy's like, oh, let me take, like, stand back. I'll take care of this. And he's like fighting one guard. And then so it cuts back and forth between him and... And Natalia and Black Widow is just fucking whooping ass and taking all these guards out. And Happy is, like, barely taking one out. Like, I see this as a similar thing. That's that's the way see, I read it. The difference, though, is that in that scene, they are both trying to accomplish the same goal. Okay. And the scene is building as one singular event. Okay. In this one... Fair enough. What, what bothers me is that you have the building tension of whatever's happening to C-3PO... Sure. And then it's also the the pacing of the editing that okay. throws me off here. It's it, it's not they're not the, there is no rhythm to it. They're just kind of like we've gone far enough with the C3PO thing with it's cut back and also it's it, it's the the sound editing that does not help it too. So like with Iron Man 2 in scenes like that, you know, you have one set of music that's playing the, through the whole thing, mm-hmm. you know. Okay. One piece of music that's building up you have Happy, you have Natalia. They're both fighting. 
the sounds are basically the same, but then you have C-3PO, intense music, super heavy, Cad Bane's talking to him, and then it cuts to, like, elevator Muzak that's playing behind Mm R2-D2, right? That's where the the cut tension, the lost tension is happening for me, right? Okay. And that's why the editing feels just not as clean. It would be one thing if it was, like, it's just either needed to ease into that music or it just needed to find a better speed or rhythm or cadence at which that happened. Yeah. So like I said, I understand what the purpose was. And I, I do believe the purpose was to contrast and provide some comic relief there the same way that Iron Man 2 meant to be doing. Mm-hmm. I do think I, I, I agree with you that that's the intent they're going for. For me, it just did not work. Fair enough. Yeah. So, but uh, once they figure out that R2 is the one with the information, uh, they head on back out to try and find C-3PO. Um, Toto and another droid, uh, was it Helios 3E? Helios 3E, who is an IG-86. Yes. Yeah, so he they head on out to find uh, R2-D2, and they promptly do, uh, which R2-D2 kind of figures out what's happening, uh, makes a mess of things in the market, runs off, uh, ends up hiding in a dark alley. Yeah, I've got another note um, about the, the CD district that they're in. Uh, mm-hmm. So R2 rolls out the spa, sees yes. the tuba jogan fruit on the ground, picks it up, mm-hmm turns around and there's like this vendor droid there right so yeah. he rolls up to him and he tweedles at him and the guy says no i don't know where your buddy is but why don't you try one of he basically says why don't you try one of my products uh he says i got some top drawer titanium guaranteed to last longer than your circuit boards like i think he's trying to sell him some type of street video uh akin to the <laughs> the type of place that Cad Bane was out of because R2 turns around and rolls off and he's like, Okay, well I'll take six credits off. Like this is just right. a this is just a dude on the street selling some some bootleg right. adult it's like films. The, yeah. It like he's in a booth, but basically if this were a real life equivalent, it'd be the guy who has like a cardboard sheet on the ground with the various videos like hanging mm-hmm. out there. Yeah. Right. Like you want so, some titanium, you want some top shelf, what you want, what you looking for here. Yeah. I do like that the guy brings up that is like, if money's an issue, I can lower the price. We can negotiate. We can figure yeah, this out. Taking six credits um, off. Yeah. Which oh, I don't know if I want to get into this. This is this is a Star Wars related side tangent that has nothing to do with this episode and but it's short and it give it usually, a go. Yeah, usually we would spin this off in its own episode. Oh, I I heard a rumor. I heard a rumor that one of the intentions of Galaxy's Edge because it's supposed to be a real living planet because it is, is that right. When there will be no gift shops in the land itself because, you know, gift shops with Disneyland embroidered on them does not exist in the Star Wars universe. There will just be merchandisers from Batu. Yes, there will be things you can buy that are things related to Batu because there will be a marketplace in Batu that we are visiting. Apparently, haggling will be a thing that is a thing i guess i hope that there is a a a blue floating winged alien with no pants uh that owns a junk shop right so here's here's my last thought on this before we turn this into a, a disney parks episode um this sounds like a good idea that will last one week I guarantee uh, it. Like, opening weekend. <laughs> yeah, it'll last, yeah, whatever two days that the park is open before they all realize, like, like the people will stay, like, the cast members will stay in character. I'm sure of it. They'll be like, well, like, if you give me a good deal, I can sell this to you or something, you know, like, like, name your price and I will sell this, blah, blah, blah. Like, that will go on for a while, and then you'll, you're will you going to have mothers who are like, no, just how much is it? My son wants it. Just 
How much is it? Yeah, like this is cute. How much is it? You don't think there's going to be like prices available and then you're able to haggle from that point? Here's no, yeah, like this is what I'm saying. Like it's going to be it still has to be a tight ship that like if there's a re- there's still going to be a real world cash register, right? Mhm. And there will be a cup. Like let's say there is a cup I was thinking like the uh, the um, reproduction Maz Kanata little wooden carved figure that Anakin has in his room. Oh, well, let's just go with that. Let, well, just anything, right? Yeah. Like so, like some mother is gonna walk into Disneyland, go through the portal that is Batu, see that figure of Maz Kanata, mm-hmm. and go, "Hey, that is cool. Can I buy that?" And they'll be like, yeah, it's $10. And then the, what's going to happen is the mother is going to go, great, here's a Hamilton. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's really what's going to happen, right? Mm-hmm. But like, Lorenzo's going to be there and be like, nah, I don't think so. What about uh, what about a Lincoln? How, well, about, like, a couple even, of, yeah. how about a couple of Washingtons? And yeah, then, like, then somebody's gonna go, Republic credits are no good out here. I need something no, no, no. more real. You're also forgetting the other part where there's 40 people behind me in line Mm -hmm. who are like, shut the fuck up, pay for the goddamn thing so we can get out of this goddamn line. (laughs) And you're going to be like, no, you should have listened to the podcast. Right. So that's what I'm saying. Like, this is not going to work in any real world where it's like there's going to be a horde of people. It's going to be like ah, fucking like, I don't know. It's just going to be a horde, like just a crowd of people. Like it's not going to, it's just not going to feasibly work out. Like I cannot imagine how this is going to work out in a, a real world theme park setting. You will have to report back after the fact and let everybody know. But in the meantime, uh, right. let's get back to the, the, the porn district that r two's in and what's going on there. So he went and hid so in an alleyway. He's hiding in a dark alley. Uh, the uh, Toto and Helios 3E are about to give up, and Helios uh, says that if they go back to Cad empty-handed, Cad won't be happy. Uh, so they kind of talk about how maybe then they'll uh, dismantle C-3PO to get at, you know, whatever. R2-D2 overhears this. Mm-hmm. Real quick, then, one thing that yeah. happens before this is that uh, they see like an R2 unit. I think it's actually mm-hmm. an R4 unit, but uh, Helios jumps out and zaps it, and it fucking falls to the ground and is moaning, and it was with another uh, humanoid droid. Right. You know, C-3PO lookalike, whatever, and it just runs off, and it's like, murderer, murderer, murderer. I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, that was a nice little moment, which also made me wonder if that droid was really, like, is there a slow death process for certain droids? Like, it's not just... I think that it's just the thing, like, if you were walking in a dark alley with a a short, rotund friend of yours and somebody jumped out and shot them and they fell down, you probably wouldn't be like, oh, is he actually dead? Is it, like, a slow death? No, you're just, like, Like, running off, like murderer murderer you know yeah I, I guess but it still just brought up that question of like like it, the whatever they shot was clearly in stun mode too you know yeah but you can tell because it's the you know the blue the circle rings. the blue circle but yeah anyways you know i agree that was a good little moment but um but yeah r2, where, r2 was hiding yeah. and uh yeah, so he overhears that they're going to dismantle C-3PO. Mm-hmm. He feels bad, knocks over a, 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 a barrel to attract Toto and Helios. Yeah, he doesn't uh, they even find surrender. Him. He just, like, makes noise so they can find him. Right. Yeah, which is a weird way to go about things. Like, he could have just easily rolled out. Like, he's just behind a box. He's behind a couple of boxes. Toto does say something where he's, He could have just like... rolled over. Mm-hmm. Toto What's does that? say something where he's, like... Uh... He's like, ad. He's like, yeah, admiral, but stupid. So is this, is this R two like, hey, I'll let them find me, and then they'll feel good about themselves instead of I just walk out and turn myself in. 
I don't know. Like, I don't know where the, you know, like your mean admiral comes from or whatever. But uh, either way, it doesn't really matter because he gets taken back to Cat Bane's way, place. Yeah. And now he's the one in the torture chamber, uh, grips of electricity or whatever you want to call it. And um, there's a whole bunch of electric prods like coming near him or something. Mm-hmm. And, and they talk about like hooking him up to extract the information which is why earlier when 3PO was like hooked up to this stuff that um that I was guessing that it's just like the the electricity is maybe to like override some stuff mm-hmm. um but when we first cut to the scene C3PO is still attached and he's like jabbering on through some electricity insanity or something and he says that he used to be the chief negotiation chief negotiator for mana Karan system. Mm-hmm. And so I looked this up, like what it was. And this is, this is essentially like the job he had before he was thrown to scrap before Anakin, the nine year old boy found the pieces of him to reconstruct yeah. him and rebuild him. So uh, it's like a prequel to the Annie building C3PO story. Nice. Uh, which is like a super deep dive that right. you're not going to know unless you dig into it. But um, I was like, there's got to be something to this because I know the history of C-3PO pretty well. And uh, being a chief negotiator in the Manicaran system doesn't sound like it fits in. So that's where it is. It's the it's the the P.A. pre-Anakin, P.A.B., pre-Anakin build. That's what we'll call it. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, so then R2 is uh, R2 is connected slash tortured slash uh, they get the info out of him. Uh, mm-hmm. Bane is ha- happy about this, and uh, he takes his data pad. He orders that their minds be erased, which apparently uh, is selectively, I guess, because even not seeing the end of this episode, we know in the future that R2 has all the information ever. Right. Well, they can clear, like, think of, like, clearing your browser history. Like, you don't have to clear uh-huh. everything. You have, like, the option of clearing just, like, the last hour, the last day, the last week. Mm-hmm. You know, right. so but, so that's exactly what they do here. They they erase just this they, recent time frame of torture. They wipe them back to the point of where they pick them up, essentially. Yes. Uh, yeah. With R2, I guess it maybe goes back f- a little further than that. So maybe R2 forgot about his massage and buff down that he got at the uh, droid spa. Um, yeah. Because yeah, like it might be from when both of them got, or like when C-3PO got picked up, they probably just wiped both their memories to that point. Right, from, like from when Toto started talking to them, probably. Yeah. Um, yep. But at this point, we cut back to... Padme's party, so that's starting. She's all stressing out, like, where could they be? And Anakin is a lot of help here, and he's like, I don't know. And uh, so then we cut back to 3PO and R2 being just dumped on the street. Uh, Toto pulls the restraining bolts off of them, and that gives them, like, another jolt of electricity. Mm-hmm. And I feel like this is what, like, re or erases their 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 memory back to a certain point mm-hmm. or whatever uh toto's pretty snarky and he's like thanks for the memories and that just reminds me of fallout boy and that song thanks for the memories and that reminds me of the uh the music video where pete wentz is in a yeah we can talk about that later. <laughs> I was not a Fallout Boy listener. There's uh, a there's a chimpanzee and a love triangle, and it's bizarre. Oh boy. Uh, oh yeah. boy. Three <laughs> PO and R two wake up, and so they start to head back to back to the party with the Jogan fruits. And three PO's like, I'm I'm sure we're late, and we missed the party already. We're gonna be deactivated for sure. Uh, we cut to Cad Bane arriving on Tatooine. He's as you do, you head to Jabba's palace. Mm-hmm. Uh, he turns the plans over. It's at this point that I remembered something that I thought happened in the future. And I was like, oh, I bet that happens in the next episode. I'm going to be excited. Nope, it happens now. Uh, we're introduced to... He talks to Jabba. Jabba's like, great, here's your money. And then he's like, wait, I have, I have another job for you. And there's like 
four and a half minutes left in the episode. Right. And then we're introduced to the, I think it's a, called like the it's High the council, council or something. Yeah. Uh, there are five council members of the Hut clans. Uh, so they're all something, something the Hut, right? Because mm-hmm. they're Huts. Uh, so I wrote down who they were and what their defining features were. Did you make any notes on this? No. So we have Java, so we know him. We don't have to do that. Uh, The first one we see is a guy named Marlo. I described him as the the Errol Flynn pencil mustache greased hair hut. Uh, Number two is Gorga Desilogilic Arpo. He's the steampunk monocle wearing hut. Yep. Uh, He also has like this team speak kind of. Uh, I don't know what you call it. Talking thing. <laughs> like a team speak headset. That's the thing, right? Like if you play video mm-hmm. games. Yeah. You have like headphones with a uh with a mouthpiece. The mic. Yeah, yeah, the mic that sticks out on the end. Uh the third hut we see is named Arok. And I called him Oogie Boogie from The Nightmare Before Christmas with an e cigarette. Yep. <laughs> and then the last one is Aruba and which Aruba with an O, not Aruba with an A, the country. Uh, but the only way that I could describe this guy was like a French hut with a cape, which is kind of weird. Yeah. Kind of has a beret, kind of has a cape. But apparently this guy died in uh, 19 BBY, which is only like two years from now. So I don't know if we're going to see that. But that's that's kind of sad for him. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, Cad's like, "Hey, Droid, tell me what's going on because my my basic is a little old, but what or a little off or something." But when he says it, like reading the subtitles, you can tell that he says a little, but it sounds in in the way that Cad Bane's voice is. Um, comes across auditorially it sounds like he says my my hoodies is hella old <laughs> which i thought was awesome yeah, um i kind of heard that too i'm not gonna lie i i know what you're talking about mm-hmm. like it was one of those that caught me off guard just a little bit but yeah I had the subtitles on so i'm like okay yeah like so the whole point of this hut uh gathering is that the reason they want the reason for the evil plan of getting the 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 plans to the Senate mm-hmm. is to break out Zero the Hut. Yep. Which I was unaware that the jail was in the Senate. Yeah, that was a revelation to me as well. And I didn't it's even weird think about that it. Is. I didn't even think about it watching this episode. I only thought about it now that we're talking about it. Uh, but yeah, the jail is in the Senate also. Uh, so they needed some plans to do that. Uh, second thing, Bane was able to break into the Jedi archives, but didn't need to steal plans to the Jedi yeah, archives. Like he just figured it out when did, he went in. Did Palpatine provide those to him? That's probably what happened. Probably. Totally yeah. what happened. It's probably um, likely what happened there. So since this is not sanctioned by Palpatine, this is coming from the Huts. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, then there's the question: Why does Jabba want Zero broken out when Zero is the one that kidnapped his son Rhoda? But that it was something about um, there's other information that Zero has that he needs because, like, they still even if they break him out. They are still putting them under basically hut house arrest because one of them, I forget which one, was like, well, I'll put them under my protection, right? Yeah, I was going to say that question is pretty quickly answered, and they're basically like, he's got some dirt on us, so we got to get him out of there so he doesn't squeal, and then right. we'll keep him quiet. Mm-hmm. Uh so it's at that point that Bane understands what's going on. He's like, I accept the job. He tells the droid. I'll take the job. And then mm-hmm. he walks over toward the huts. We cut back over to Padme's apartment. And uh, this this one senator that she wanted to impress, Senator Aang, yep. is uh, 
He's like, let's sign the treaty and let's eat my favorite dessert. And then he holds his glass up and everybody like silently cheers. But uh, C-3PO's not back yet with the Jogan fruit. So mm-hmm. Anakin's pissed and then out walks a, a droid who is named the Baker Droid. And uh, this guy is actually voiced by uh, Duff Goldman. So very nice. Last week on the show, we had uh, we had Ralph from Cake Boss, and on this week, we've got Duff Goldman of Ace of Cakes. <laughs> and apparently, the two of them went head to head in a cake building competition, uh, Duff vs. Buddy, which airs on March 10th, I believe. March 10th, yeah. Yeah. March 10th Food Network, I, Food I believe Network. he said. Yes. Yep. So I think officially these aren't the nerds you're looking for uh, is putting their vote behind Ralph seeing as he came on the show and we got to hang out with him and talk to him for a while. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, coincidentally, the next week we got Duff Goldman. So he's trying to he's trying to fight for our vote, but uh, he didn't get mine. <laughs> yeah, he just had a couple of lines. Yeah, but, uh, I think it's like one line. He's basically like, uh, so what do we do? And right. then right then is when C-3PO and R2 show up. Uh, they have the Jogan fruit. And they put the Jogan on the cake. And but they count, like he counts out, like one of the droids is like, one, two, three, and four. Because you need four Jogan on your Jogan fruit cake. Uh, yep. I don't know. Why, so it's delivered but, out to yeah. Cinderang and everything. Everything's nice. Um, you know what I expected to happen is that this little rabbit droid that was carrying the cake was going to like trip. I thought that was happening too. I thought that cake was going down. I didn't think that cake was going to survive of all things, honestly, because I'm with he, you there. even at the beginning of the episode when, uh, when C-3PO is being like mega, party planner or whatever mm-hmm. all all these little rabbit droids are walking around and he makes the comment like we asked for servant droids and they send us these incompetent fools or whatever mm-hmm. so they're all bumbling and bumping into each other and don't know what's going and on things are getting dropped and stuff uh-huh. like- so i fully expected the cake to just go flying yeah. and like I land was- land on c3po or something yeah uh, i was with you there but then so anakin does kind of like yell at them and reprimand them mm-hmm. for being late. And then they do bring up that they don't remember where they were for the last couple of hours. Mm-hmm. And Anakin kind of brushes this off, which I think is kind of weird. He doesn't though. So uh, he, it, it seems like he does. Cause C3PO is like, we ran into some complications and he's like, Oh yeah. What complications? And C3PO is like, I don't even remember. And then Padme comes up and she's like, Hey, the cake's here. You need to take it easy on these droids. Like, quit being so mean to them. And then she walks off back to her party. And then Anakin's like, hey, look, I don't remember isn't going to cut it this time, 3PO. Like, I need to know what happened. And then it just kind of pans back and you see that everybody's happy and the cake's there. Right. And uh, yada, yada, yada. So. And they're like, they're all cheering. Like, they're like, yes, cake, cake, cake. Um. But, like, in terms of just the fact that they're in a war and they should know that there are a lot of attacks on security and, act like, people trying to access intelligence to send these two droids out and then for both of them to come back and have missing memory. You know, it's not like, like, it's just... For this episode to end here, like it makes sense, but also like from a character perspective, I feel like Anakin would be would have to be somewhat suspicious. This is the fault of having an inexperienced twenty year old as a general in your war that right. can leave the war to go to his secret girlfriend's house to have a fucking party. Right. But like we already had the episode though where R2 goes missing and Anakin freaks out because he mentions that he didn't wipe R2 like he was supposed to. Well, maybe R2 because Anakin understands R2, right? And C-3PO's uh-huh. like, I don't know what happened. R2 was probably like, man, I went to the fucking spa and I got an oil bath and a massage and a fucking and a buff job. I don't know mm-hmm. what he was doing. That's what I was doing. And Anakin's going to stick up for R2 and he's always going to like piss on C- 
C-3PO, you know. But I just still feel like a droid, like the droid should realize that there's missing time there. I agree. Right. Like that's the only thing that bothers me about this little exchange here is that I feel like one or both should be smart enough to realize like, wait, you're missing time too. And I'm missing time. Like, like what took us so long? You know, like why were we delayed in coming back? Right. Do you think that they know that there is some time dilation there? Or do you think that like, there's just, you know, th- they think that it's 8.30 and it's actually 9.47 or something like that. I think they have access to time, right? Like, okay. I-, I imagine it's like the same thing that happens like when you shut off a phone and you turn it back on and it goes, hey, like, we just connected in. It's 8.30, you know? Yeah, but I don't, uh, I don't shock my phone with electricity to try to get information out of it. What I'm saying is, like, the moment they wake back up, they should realize, like, whatever time it is, you know? Like, so c 3 is like, I'm sure we're late. Mm-hmm. So maybe they don't fully know. But when they get there, they should realize that they've been gone for far too long. Okay. So do you right? think that, uh, like, when you turn your phone off for, for a little bit of time or whatever and you turn it back on, Siri is like, what the fuck just happened? Well... I mean, no, it's like reaching out where it's like, okay, we were off, so let's get the information we need to run this shit again. You know, <laughs> like all the programs booting up, like one of them is just connecting to either Wi Fi or cellular data mm-hmm. and then accessing local time. Okay. Right? And like even doing like a quick GPS on like where you are, right? Yeah. So you see what I'm saying where it's like I turn my phone on and for like a hot second, like when I'm changing time zones for a hot second, it'll have the old time Mm -hmm. and then it goes, oh, that's not right. And then change it. It's even weirder when you're on, when you're traveling at like ground speeds going from, from one Mm -hmm. time zone to another. Yeah. Uh, Like there's a, if you're like on a freeway going like 70, you know, like there's a good few seconds before it's like oh yeah you're in a different time zone now yeah and if you have multiple phones in the car they'll change at different times but yeah totally so the way this uh the way this episode officially ends is that when padme comes up and she scolds anakin for being mean she tells 3po like oh you did a magnificent job and and then that's when she walks off and Golden Tony, all full of himself, is like, magnificent job, magnificent job. Did you hear that? Magnificent job. So then he's just wandering around telling everybody that he did a magnificent job. And uh, and he's talking to R2, and he's like, we're going to be hearing about this for a while. And yep. Iris in, cue loud music, end the episode. Uh, I do want to give a cautionary note after watching this episode. I tried to give my my iPhone an oil bath and a massage and a buff job and a uh, <laughs> bad idea. Uh, the, our current earth technology does not, does not support these spa services for, for our personal robots. So <laughs> tomorrow making a trip to the cell phone store. Uh, yeah. Hey, at least the, at least the new phones are waterproof, which is nice. Not up to a certain point. Not uh, vegetable oil proof, apparently. Huh? Yeah. So, anyways. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Anything else you got to say about this episode before we kind of wrap up? No. Thumbs I have up, thumbs di- down? I have discussed all of all of my points, so let's dive into the thumbs up, thumbs down. Is this one a, a Dave Rave or a Filoni Baloney? I'm going uh, thumbs down with this one. Okay. And it's just barely. It's not. I didn't hate this episode, but I'm not gonna lie. I was okay with this episode. Like the the bad editing of the the spa torture scene bothered me, but there was enough going for it that I was kind of on board. But then this weird like four minute aside of the council happening at the end of this episode really screeched this episode to a halt for me 
like it was good information but it just the pacing of it the reveal of like it it didn't feel like a reveal it was just like i was just glad to have a money handoff and like this mission was over i didn't need like the motive of this mission Mm -hmm. you know just that there is a plan was enough for me but for them to like have to have a meeting and then again it was a weird pacing thing of huts talking robot talking cad listening cut back to huts they say more stuff talks to robot talks cad hears it cad might say something to robot robot responds back with what more stuff hut is saying like that scene to me it has information that is necessary i just don't know if it was necessary in this episode Mm -hmm. and even if it was just the way they did it just killed all the kinetic energy that this episode had I cannot disagree with mm-hmm. uh, with your arguments about the pacing of this episode. Yeah. But I will disagree with your evaluation of this episode, and I give this mm-hmm. one a thumbs up. Yep. <laughs> I like this one. Uh, the, the whole party planning thing is an excuse to get C-3PO and R2-D2 down into the to the scummy parts of Coruscant, which I do feel like there should be like some food Uber service that could just drop some joking fruit off right. real yeah. quick. Like, uh, especially for a Senator. Um, I don't know why R2 is tasked with this, but I love Cad Bane. Mm-hmm. I really like Toto 360. I think we talked about him last time. Yeah. Uh, he's a fun character. Seth Green does a great job voicing him. Yeah. Uh, He's a lot of fun. Yeah. The Huts and the Hut Council, the first time I saw this, I hated it because I was deep, deep, deep into the EU and Mm -hmm. the Disagilic clan, or however you pronounce it, uh, Jabba the Hutt's clan of peoples, right, was much different in the old EU than it is now. I'm uh-huh. far enough separated from that now that it's fun. Like the the they have these corny car- caricatures of, you know, like 1940s and 50s like mustache twirling bad guys. Right. And I dig it. Like I said, when I got near the end, I was like that's what I was thinking of is the Hut Council. And I thought that I was remembering it from a future episode, but I wasn't. Mm. And compacting it down into the last four minutes was a stretch. Can I say that compacting something is a stretch? Does that make <laughs> sense? You know what yeah. I mean? Like, it, it probably wasn't the right place. Like, maybe wait till the next episode. But now I'm hoping that uh, next week for Hostage Crisis, like, that is kind of kind of dug into a little bit more and that we get to see a little more of that uh because that i think we know what's going on in hostage crisis right right like and and like i said i i'm down i'm thinking in hostage crisis bane is going to probably take some hostages and work on his plan to break out zero uh so you know it was a it was a fun beginning with this with this little bit different kind of um what am i trying to say anyway the the newsreel was a little bit different at the beginning and then we we go through with this kind of foolish r2d2 c3po plot line but we got cad bane and i think when he was introduced i said you give me cad bane i'm gonna give you a thumbs up so i can ramble on for forever uh saying many more things but there you go cad bane thumbs up well like like I said, I, I'm down for all the pieces of this episode. Mm-hmm. It just it doesn't come together for me. So like, while I like Cad Bane, I I love Toto, and I like I do like the introduction of the idea of this hut council, mm-hmm. and I like the details of them. It's just 
if I'm giving a thumbs up, thumbs down to the quality of this episode as an episode on its own, mm-hmm. like it, it just isn't there. You know? Yeah. Fair Again, enough. it's not bad. It's just like, it's just not good enough at all for me to consider this a good episode. Right. So, so yeah, like I, and I'm with you. Like I really, I'm really excited to see more of Cad Bane and this hut council, but yeah, I just hope that we get it nice and packaged a lot more tightly than we got here. So, you know, some, sometimes we get that. Sometimes we don't. And, uh, this is one of those episodes where we did and we didn't, I guess. Right. Yeah. So, so this one's anyways. split down the middle. Lorenzo's thumbs down. Kevin's thumbs up. Uh, next week we've got, uh, season one, episode 22 hostage crisis. So we're jumping way back in the timeline, uh, over a year and a half before evil plans aired. Uh, we'll talk more about that next week, but, uh, until then we'd like to, as always give a shout out to Kevin for doing our podcast artwork. Kevin Warren is available to talk to on Twitter at they call me K Dub. And uh, Lindsay took care of our music for us. You can email her at streamtransymusic at gmail.com. If you want to talk to us, hit me up on Twitter at Not the Nerds. Talk to Lorenzo over on Facebook, maybe at Not the Nerds Podcast. You can shoot us an email at Not the Nerds Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, you know, comments likes all that stuff on all of the pod catchers check us check us out on youtube uh send us a comment there and you'll get some some feedback from me you can talk to me that way as well and uh i think uh i think other than that we're gonna get out of here and next week again hostage crisis until then i've been kevin lorenzo here these aren't the nerds you're looking for bye bye